Hey guys, Stephen here from Inbound and I wanted to produce a really quick video basically going through on-page SEO and the factors that you just kind of need to keep in mind when producing new content, new blog posts or new pages on your site. So I'm not going to go through every single factor in depth, but I want to go through a few main key points. So the first thing to keep in mind is the keyword. So start your title tag with a keyword, but essentially overall when you produce a new blog post, when you produce a new page, a new website, there should be a reason why you're producing it and it should have a focus keyword. So you should have done some research before. You should already have a list of keywords that you want to focus on and the result that, you know, if you rank really well, what outcome you can expect from that, how many searches a month it has. And that's where you should start with in mind when you produce a new piece of content. So I'm assuming right now you've got this for this example. I'm just going to go through his example and just assume my, um, my keyword is on page SEO. And we'll go through from this. So the first thing to keep in mind is with title tags, the closer your keyword is to the front of the, of the title, the more emphasis Google places on it. So words at the beginning of the sentence has more impact for SEO. So for example, right here, he's got on page SEO guide and his keyword is on page SEO. So that's the perfect title. You know, if he's worded it in a way that he can put his keyword first, and it still makes a lot of sense if you're a, if you're a user or you're, you're a reader of his blog. The second thing is URLs. So a lot of um, CMS systems like WordPress, their URL structure is pretty long. For example, it'll force you to put a date, then a subfolder for the category, and then the article title. The shorter your, your URL is, and the more predominant for the keyword it is, the better. So on his actual blog post, you can see here's his title. And then for his URL, he's got on page SEO, which is perfect. So Google knows instantly that look, the focus of this is on page SEO and it's reinforced by the relevancy of the URL as well, which is awesome. And then you've got your focus keyword and then you start adding modifiers to really make it into a bit of a, a bit of a blog post. So for example, if your main keyword was florist Auckland, you could do um, florist Auckland, you know, the 27 best flowers to buy in spring. So you've got the keyword at the front, you've got a bit of a blog title as well, and it's all looking really good. <clears throat> the next step is to focus on some tags. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's a little bit of code required, but for most CMS systems, again, they provide the ability to change um, what title size it is. You know, a lot of people correlate or titles with, with how big the words are, um, but there's a little bit of a deeper meaning behind it. So an H1 tag, tells Google that this is the focus of the whole piece. So you should really only have one H1 tag per page or per post. And then you can break it down furthermore by H2 tags. So for example, this is H1. And usually again, if you're using WordPress, the title will automatically be an H1 tag, <clears throat> especially the main title of each page. And then you can see down here, he's broken up the page with more titles, but they're not H1 tags. All these will be H2 tags or even h3 tags. So this will be an h2 tag and here's an h3 tag here. And the reason why you do that and why you separate things with title tags is essentially it puts a tiered priority on different words. So Google knows that there's only one h1 tag, the h2 tags, they separate, you know, the secondary important key terms or key concepts and then the h3 are again, the exact same thing, but a less emphasis. Then he goes into putting engaging images and videos. <clears throat> the reason why you do this is the longer people stay on the site and the less they bounce, the more Google knows that your page is relevant to what they're searching for. So you want to put a little bit of engaging, especially relevant um, multimedia or videos. So going back to his page and going through, he's got this infographic, which is really, really great. And then he's got, you know, some videos here. He's got a few different images and um, heaps of images, a ton of multimedia. And again, this keeps you engaged with the post and going through it, which is really, really good for not only, you know, customer engagement, i.e. turning people into clients, but also for Google as well to know that people are engaging with your content. So then he goes a little more detail about H2 tags, which we've covered. The next thing is again for Google and for people is you want your keyword in the first hundred words. <clears throat> so going back to the top, you can see right here that it's got on-page SEO. And so for Google, it, it again reinforces the fact that, hey, look, this post is about on-page SEO. You're not spamming it, but you just really want to ensure that Google knows that. But also it's for relevance. So if someone Googles um, SEO guide or on-page SEO and they come to this website, again, they, they know they're in the right place. They see it right here. Cool. They see it in the copy. Cool. And they see it here as well. 
So like they know they're in the right place. But for example, if your main keyword was starts halfway throughout the blog and you gotta scroll like down this far before you even see it, you're gonna have a really, really high bounce rate because although your intention is correct, people don't know that you actually get into the keyword. So just reinforcing the fact that you're gonna talk about it and putting it right at the front is very important. The next thing is responsive design, which essentially means if it's mobile friendly or if it can change its size according to the screen size. Again, if you're on WordPress, Squarespace, HubSpot, any of those big platforms, it happens automatically. If you're not, again, usually web devs are pro this. Essentially, the downside if you don't have a responsive is you're not gonna really appear very um, highly on mobile search terms, especially if there's competitors on there. Google will always place an emphasis on mobile responsive websites on mobile searches. Um, so if your website's not responsive, it's definitely something to look into. Uh, the next thing is outbound links, which essentially means just linking to relevant um, websites and search terms is really, really good to tell both Google and people that you know, you're sourcing your information and actually providing more and more value. The next step is interlinking or internal links, which essentially means that you should link between different pieces of content. This shares the SEO value. This means that people engage more with your content because they're not only gonna read the one post, but they're more likely to jump on another post, um, which in turn reduces the bounce rate, increases the time on site, and again, just makes, uh, shares the SEO value between all your SEO, all your posts as well. Then we've got uh, site speed. If your website takes longer than two seconds to load, people are probably gonna start bouncing. If it takes longer than six seconds, they're gonna close the tab before it even loads. People are very, very touched about this. We've got so much you know, stimulus nowadays that you really gotta make sure your site speed loads pretty quickly. So a good indicator is that two seconds, that's when you gotta start being a little bit scared. If it's longer than that, <clears throat> if it's longer than four, then most people like they've said here, 75% of people won't revisit a site that has longer than four second bounce rate. Even if they see a result on Google again, they're like, oh, that's that site that you know took ages to load, so they'll, they'll skip it. So just put a little emphasis on that. Um, it is kind of hard to change, but changing hosts is a very quick and simple way to, to rectify that situation. Um, then we've got LSI keywords, which essentially is just synonyms. So what you're saying with synonyms is you're being able to talk about your term in more technical depth. So Google thinks, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's got some synonyms. So obviously he's not just spamming the word SEO every single time or on-page SEO, but you see here's got uh, optimization, SEO checklists, SEO factors. So it's got a whole bunch of different <clears throat> terms that relate to the same category or relate to the same key term, um, but shows Google that you're, you've got a little bit of technical knowledge about it. You can talk about it a little bit more in depth and you're also not spamming that one keyword throughout the whole thing. Then we've got image optimization. So when you upload an image to a CMS platform, the file name on your computer is what the file name is gonna be on the website. So for example, if I uh, same same image as, so you can see that Brian Dean, the guy of Backlinko, he's actually named, before he put this on his website, the file name on his computer was on page SEO infographic version 3.1. And that's what kind of sticks. So it's kind of a really good habit to get into is rename your files before you upload them. And that will give you a really, um, you know, tiny but good boost towards SEO and the relevancy as well. Next, using social sharing buttons. It's very, very important to make sure that people can share it, especially if they like it. So if you don't have any social sharing buttons, I'll give an example of his first. So he's got them here, which is fantastic. He's also got them down the bottom. So if you do manage to read the whole thing, again, boom, you're much more likely to share it. Um, sharing content is a good signal to Google and that's increasing more and more as time goes by as more and more people become social. So the more social signals or shares your, uh, your blog or website has, um, the higher the correlation is gonna be in Google as well. If you don't have an easy share um, button or access on your computer, or sorry, on your website or on your blog. A really cool free way to do it is with Sumo Me. They've got free services, but you can also upgrade to get rid of branding. But again, as you see over here and you can see over here, it's just a really, really quick and easy way to add share buttons to mobile and blog posts or even your website as well. You can set where you want the share buttons to appear. But again, it's just a very, very quick and easy way. Again, for free, all you need to do is add one line of code and you're good to go. The next thing is um, post length. Back in the days, a couple of years ago, um, the main push was for content pieces between four to 800 words, because that means it's, it's long enough for Google to pick it up, but it's also short enough that you can just churn them out, right? 
more and more people are or google since there's more and more search searches happening there's more and more websites posting there's more and more competition google's looking for more and more relevant and value driven content and what this means is you essentially got to start making your post longer otherwise it just won't appear so i think there's a correlation um, that most of the top ranking results are around 2000 words of content on them so essentially that means that all right if you're used to writing 800 word posts why not kick it up to 1200 if you used to write writing 1200 why not kick it up to 1500 in this way instead of writing 10 articles about the same subject to try rank for it you can write one article and just really make it an in-depth beautiful topic optimize it properly and then get it out there as well the other benefit of longer content is it just provides more value to people as well so they're going to engage with it longer and if you're trying to get some backlinks it's easy to you know talk to blog owners and be like hey look you're currently linking to this but look i've done this plus this all one big blog post which will add way more value to your readers and they're like oh wow that's so true let's link to you instead so it's a really good way to to get people in your site which is what this is to reduce that bounce rate and to also help your rankings as well so that's a quick brief overview on the on-page factors for a website so i hope that helps you so next time you launch a blog post or a page on your website again keep a keyword in mind and then follow these easy steps and your on-page SEO will be much happier for it.